Did uh, Ms. Tantra explains about asana in an impurified body, mind is usually restless. So we're looking at body to mind. Usually mind to body is study has most of the time been how the mind influences the body. But now here Shiva says, Shiva is the authority here. He says that in an impurified body, mind is usually restless. So if the mind is restless then we need to purify the body. How do we purify the body? We have many processes, but here it is through asana. So when the text talks and uses the word Shiva or Shakti, it is the Rishi who has written the text or who has given it, usually it's the oral tradition. The Rishi speaks and then it's absorbed by the students and then they keep it for centuries. So when they talk about Shiva and Shakti, it is the humility of the Rishi not to use his name. They don't use their name because what will survive is, and they are intelligent enough to know that if you use Shiva and Shakti, it will be perpetual. That is how the Rishis protected the trees. Like the neem tree, they say this, is, this tree belongs to Kali or the Tulasi, the holy basil belongs to Krishna. So by assigning a divinity, an aspect of divinity to the different trees, silver and all that, they've been able to preserve these very highly medicinal plants up to today. How will how will it be possible to practice concentration without purifying the body? Because the body needs to be purified in order to maintain concentration, right? Body not purified, mind is unable to concentrate. So Shiva says, purify the body. As we keep on purifying the body, then the mind becomes steady. So this is what asana yoga is or what hatha yoga is. Hatha yoga is somato psyche. That means from the body, soma, you go to the mind. Most practices are from the mind to the body. And all of us know how difficult it is to work with the mind. Working with the mind, with the existing mind. Any tools to go and manipulate the mind? It's easier to manipulate the body than we got many tools to manipulate the body and can be easily seen and rectified. Someone, a coach, can rectify the physical processes, but nobody can rectify the mental processes unless you share. But the physical processes, people can see and rectify. Whatever is happening in the mind, only you can explain. And when we explain, it's usually filtered. So, the help is also not enough. It's not enough because whatever we are saying is filtered. So he says that a purified body is full of vitality and fit for concentration. So we are talking about asana, purification through the shankarmas, jalaniti, kunjal, the shankar, and basti, nauli, tratakara, kapalavati. All this is part of the shakramas. Then body is purified through. When we practice the shakramas, you feel good. When we practice the asanas, the body feels lighter. When you practice the shakramas, there is a difference in the body. Tamas is less, quite dynamic, full of vitality. Then fit for concentration. When the body is light and uh, feels good, mind is easier to concentrate with, isn't it? We can easily use the mind to concentrate. Otherwise, the mind is a little bit distracted. But here we are talking about asana. We are not talking about jogging or swimming. We are talking about asana because according to the tantras and the Upanishads and the Shastras, he says that only asanas doesn't matter from which tradition it is, but it is in the form of Thiram and Sukha. 
that is able to awaken the prana and when the prana is awakened the mind blossoms and able to hold on to concentration